Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be updating iNav Radar. So about nine months ago I made a video on how to set up iNav Radar and in that we covered how to do the hardware wiring. So this video I'm not going to go into that so I'll put a link up in the top corner so you can check that video out for the hardware side. But in this video we're just concentrating on the firmware because the process of putting the firmware onto the ESP32 has changed slightly. I'm going to go through as if I'm doing a complete fresh install as far as the firmware is concerned and I'm also going to explain the update process because there is a little bit less that you need to do in the update. With regards to the actual modules themselves, uh, when I first did the video you had to get pretty much a specific module which was the version 1 of this TTGO or LilyGo ESP32 module. But now there is firmware for 1.0, 1.3, 1.4, 1.6 and 2.0 hardware iterations of these modules. So there's a lot more bases covered, there's a lot more compatibility. One thing I would recommend though is when you get these modules, write on it somewhere which version you have because I couldn't find any screen printing on this at all. This is a version 1 so maybe the later versions have got a version number screen printed on but it's well worth making a note so that you know which firmware to install when you do an update in the future. So anyway, what we're gonna do is head over to the computer desktop and we'll take a look at the RC Group site. Okay, so this is the RC Group's webpage. I'll put a link in the video description, but this is where we can pretty much download everything that we need to get this working. So there is some basic information about how you can set it up, how it works. Uh, there's a wiki link for the ESP32. And there are some links to boards that you can buy to do this. And I guess there are affiliate links that go to support the creators of our iNav radar. So that's well deserved. Right, so now you notice that something that wasn't there, I don't believe, when I first downloaded is they're now saying 433 megahertz is recommended. And the reason I think partly for that is because of the, the way the firmware is done now. There's less setup to do with the 433 megahertz, but you'll also get more range uh, because of the frequency. You also see this note here that basically all of the LilyGo brands are supported from version 2 to 2.1. Uh, and there are just different firmwares to download. What we'll do is we'll skip this part for the minute because that's setting up on iNav, that's covered in the other video, and we'll head down to this part here. So these are the slight differences between the different models. So if you've got a 1.0 or 1.3, you need to wire up the TX to pin 17, the RX to pin 23. Version 1.4, the TX pin 17, the RX to pin 16, 1.6 TX pin 3, RX pin 1, and 2.0, the TX pin 17, RX to pin 23. And there's apparently a new USB-C version, and you would flash that as the 1.4 with the same pin layout. They haven't actually got a pin layout for the 2.1, which it says it's supported. So maybe that's something that will appear in the near future. So, right, how do we download this? Right, we need a couple of tools for our computers. So the first thing that we need to do is get hold of this ESP32 download tool, which the link is right here, and that will take you to the Expressif website. So all we need to do is download this uh, flash download tools, click the download, it will download the zip file to your desktop or wherever you store it. I've already downloaded it, so I'll just go to the file. And what we have is the flash download tool zip file. This is what we've just downloaded from that Expressive website. So if you double click that and just drag the folder in there to your desktop, and what we need to do is just use this folder and you can open that up and you're just gonna run this file here. Now I would recommend right clicking it and running it as an administrator. If you don't, uh, some things just don't work properly, it can't save its configuration information, that sort of thing. So if you click the X button at the top, I've noticed that doesn't actually close it. So I'd recommend running it as an administrator. I'm gonna run it from a shortcut that I've created just because I've stored the files elsewhere, but it's exactly the same as if I was just running it through that folder. So what we'll do is we'll double click on my shortcut. 
you may get a user account control pop-up box saying do you want to run this choose yes there is another box that may pop up which will have an allow or don't allow so just choose uh, more information and then allow the program to run once that's running what you'll get on your screen is a little box like that and you'll get a, a dos window this you can just minimize and hide out the way it's how the, the program actually runs but what we want to do is choose chip type ESP32, make sure work mode is in develop and then click on OK. Sorry, I'm working off two screens here, so I have to drag stuff about so that you can see it. Um, right, so this is the ESP32 download tool. Now, what I would recommend doing first is plugging in your ESP32. Now with the 868 and 915 modules, you, there is a USB on here, you can just use that. With the 433 modules, I believe you need to use an adapter. I don't actually have a 433 module or an adapter yet, so I can't really cover that in this video, but it should be a straightforward case, plugging the module into the adapter and then plugging the adapter into USB. Well, what I'm gonna do is just plug the other end of this USB cable in and get power to the board. So you can see I've already got INAV Radar 2.1 on this. And the reason why I'm getting you to plug it in now is so that you can check this COM box. One of the problems I had is I had nothing shown um, for the COM port. And the reason for that were the Windows drivers. So if I right click on the start button and we go to device manager, it's not gonna show up for me now because it's all working, but I believe it's in here. Ah, no, sorry, under ports. Um, if you've got a problem, it will show up anyway, straight away with a yellow triangle by it. So what you need to do is I'll put this website in the video description, but you go to the SI Labs website, who are the people who make the chip, download USB to UART bridge, go to downloads, and then download the Windows driver if you're on Windows. So I downloaded this version 11.1, .1, the very top one, universal Windows driver. Um, if you click that, you will download a zip file again. So let's go back to the desktop. So the zip file you get is this one here, CP 2.1X universal Windows driver. If you right click on that, extract all, you will get the folder with that driver in it. So what you'll need to do is right click on the, uh, the device with the yellow triangle, the CP210, uh, and choose update driver. Click on browse my computer for drivers. And then what you'll do is navigate to the desktop where this folder is saved, and then just click next, and it will install the driver for you. Once you've done that, you can just uh, use this ESP32 tool and it's fine. Right, so what we're going to do is now do a complete fresh install of iNav Radar. This is if it's the first time installing on this specific ESP32. So what we're going to do is actually bring up the iNav Radar website and we're going to go and find the firmware. So to download the firmware, it's this big red bit here. So if you open that in a new tab, we're taking the Dropbox with the firmware. Now, you can just go into this and download specific uh, chipsets, but what I did was went into the zip file and just downloaded the whole zip file. If I buy different versions of the module, I've still got the file if uh, I need to update or if I've got multiple INAV radar modules already with different firmwares on or different hardware versions, I can just update them all from the one file. So just click that download button and it will download the file. Again, I've already got it on my desktop, so let me just go there. So here we have the file that downloads. Again, just right click and extract all, and you'll get an ESP32 3.01 folder, which has the ESP32 radar folder in it, and then the different firmware versions. So what we need to do now, we have that folder, is set up our download tool. So what we're gonna do is click these little dots here and that is the file open box. Now you can see I'm already at the right place, but if not, just navigate to your folder. So for me, it was desktop, ESP32 radar 3.01, ESP32 radar, and then you choose the correct version of the hardware. Like I said, I'm running on the version one board, 
but if you've got the 1.4, 1.6, 1.2, 1.3, 1.3 or yeah, so on, you choose the correct version of for the hardware of that ESP32. So nicely the, they are numbered, so all we need to do is add these in order at this point. So let's open bootloader, default, boot app, firmware, and uh, FS. Now we're not done yet. We need to add some addresses in this side. So let's bring up the website again. And then it's just a case of copying these numbers into here. So you, you have to type them in. This is a, an image. Unfortunately, you can't just copy and paste. But for the first one, 0x1000. The next one is 0x8000. Next one is 0xe000. Then it's 0x10000. And the final one is 0x291000. So that's our addresses added. All we need to do now is add the ticks in here to say that we want to update those values. And then we can just double check that our settings are matching. So we want SPI speed of 40, which we have. SPI mode of DIO, that's correct. We want to make sure that this is not checked. When you first start it, it is checked. So just uncheck that and set the board rate to 92600. Now we can choose our COM port because we know that that's all there and all good. So the next thing to do is just click start. And you'll notice now on the ESP32, the screen has gone off, the red light is flashing and it is actually doing the update process. So we'll come back in a sec when this is done. Okay, so it's done. Again, I, I mentioned it in the first video. It doesn't really tell you much other than this says finish, but it's the same color, so you don't really notice it change. So that's all good. So I'm going to just press the reset button. And then what you'll see on the ESP32 screen is it says ESP32 3.0.1, which is the version we've just installed. But you'll also notice that it says that it is running at 433 megahertz. This is an 868 megahertz uh, ESP32. So we have got some more work to do. If you're running 433, you're basically done. Hook it up to the UR on the flight controller and you're away. What I'm going to do first, however, is show you the process for just doing an update. So if you already have an older version of iNav Radar running on this particular ESP32, all you need to do is uh, flash the firmware bin file, which is 0x10,000. And the tick, and then start. Again, we'll pop back in a sec, but this should be a quicker update. And there we go, we're done. We'll do a reset. And we're on iNav Radar 3.0.1. Right, so if you're not on a 433 megahertz module, we still have a bit of work to do. So what I'll do, I'll just close down um, that window. What we need to do now is connect to the ESP32 via Bluetooth so we can actually set the frequency we want it to work at. So what we need to do is we'll restart the ESP32 and we're just waiting for a message on here that says press to start Bluetooth. So we just press this top button. And when it boots up, we should then be in Bluetooth mode. So we've got a plus BT there. Then when it finishes, we have configuration um, type CMD for a list of commands. So at this point, you have a choice of how you can do this. If you've got an Android phone, you can connect via that. But what I'm going to do is show how to do it in Windows. Uh, just because it's easier for me to demo, to be honest. The first thing that we need to do is we need to have a computer that can support Bluetooth. If not, you will need to do this on like a smartphone or, or something like that. The instructions for that update are on the RC Group site. So we have a, an actual app that you can use on an Android phone. Unfortunately, iPhone, probably you can't get it working. So have a look on your computer, you may have a solution. Now, the first thing that I did was download this uh, Bluetooth serial terminal tool for Windows, which is free. So it doesn't work 
great with this and I'll show you why in a minute, but it does get the job done. So I'll put a link to this in the video description as well, but what I'm gonna do is just minimize that for the minute. Right, so now what we need to do is get to our Bluetooth devices. Click on settings and search for Bluetooth. And Bluetooth device and discover. So because this is, this is operating in Bluetooth mode, all we need to do is add it. So we click the add button, go to Bluetooth, and then it will find the devices. Now this could be my old ESP32, or it could be that one. No, it's disappeared. Right, so we've got two unknown devices. I'm gonna try this one. And if it was the right one, it will say ESP32. Right, so eventually you will get connected and paired and then click done. And we can then minimize this. And what we'll do is we'll open up that uh, Bluetooth serial terminal program. This is just a really simple program. Um, what you'll get is a list of connected uh, uh, Bluetooth devices. We'll just choose the ESP32 and click connect. Typically this is, ah, finally. So when, when you're connected, you don't get anything up here. It just says disconnect. But to test out whether the connection is good, we can type CMD and what that will do is return a list of commands. But now you'll see why this doesn't work perfectly with our modules here. It basically ends up in an infinite loop um, and just keeps going around. But we can see we've got a connection. All right, that's actually stopped. <laughs> oh no, still going. But if I disconnect, what we can do is see a list of commands. So what we should get back is just that information, probably a header as well. Um, but yeah, we should get this information here. So it tells you that you just type in band 433 to set it to 433, band 868 to set it to 868, or band um, 915 to set it to 915. There's also the different modes for standard, long range and fast, uh, ground station mode, and then that's all we need to worry about. So what I'm gonna do is because it's having issues, it's, it's just looping around, sending that back. I'm gonna restart this and put it back into Bluetooth mode. And now, now we're back at that configuration screen. I will connect again. So that was nice and quick. All we're gonna do is type band 868 uh, because I'm using 868. And again, this will just loop through and loop through. But we know that that command has been accepted. So I'm going to just reboot. And then what we'll see when we come back this time is that it's on the correct frequency. It's on 868 megahertz. It's on the standard mode still. Again, if we wanted to change it to long range mode or fast mode, we can do that. Um, it's actually quite interesting. If you look on the website, it does go over the different ranges. So standard mode on 433 megahertz is about um, one to, to four kilometers, which is pretty good. Uh, that's with two nodes in the air. If you've got one on the ground, it's less, but if you're both in the air, it's one to four kilometers. Uh, long range is about 1.7 times that distance, but it refreshes slower. And the fast mode is less distance, but will refresh quicker. So that's something else that you can change and experiment with. If you're flying further away, 433 would be better anyway, but also you could put it in long range mode and see where your friends are up to four kilometers away. So that's pretty good. But we noticed that we're now updated. We're on the latest version. We've got a few different screens now. Uh, with different slots there. But what I can do actually is plug this one in as well. So we can have two next to each other. This one I updated just before making the video. And this one I've actually got hooked up to a flight controller. So let's restart this one. So you can actually see I've got a screen name on this one. Well, no satellites because it's not, not working. But this is module B. Sorry, that's the flight controller. 
and this is module A so you can see that there's two devices connected and if we scroll through the screens we can see information about where the other one is obviously there's no um, GPS hooked up so it's not great but yeah there we go so there we go that's how you update iNav radar in this video we've covered how to flash the latest version of the firmware completely from scratch we've also covered how to update the firmware and we've also included how to change the parameters so you can set it to the correct frequency for the board and also change the mode that you want to use for flying in so hopefully you guys found this video useful if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up click the subscribe button and the bell icon to help get this out to more people so they can learn how to update iNav Radar 2. Also, you may find that there's other content on my channel that you find interesting. So if you do, great. Um, this is all about making it easier for people to fly and having a great time while doing it. So I hope you guys enjoy. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them.